Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video we will talk about erythematous diseases. Erythema is divisible red discoloration of the skin due to hyperemia, so increased blood flow to the affected area. It affects primarily the superficial capillaries. Hyperemia can be due to a series of causes infection, pressure, different creams like acne creams, allergies, medications like ACE inhibitors, sunburn, acute radiation, mercury toxicity, or methods for removal of hair are just a few of them. The diagnosis, whether the appearance of the skin is due to erythema or if it is perhaps purpura, is done by the blanching test. This means that upon pressure applied with a sliding glass of a microscope, the underlying skin will appear white and a red color will disappear. Also, there is no elevation of the skin temperature observed. So far, so good for the general things to know. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the different types of erythematous diseases. In this video, I will explain erythema nodosum, erythema multiforme, erythema migrans, also called erythema chronicum migrans, erythema infectiosum, also known as fifth disease, erythema marginatum, which you might know from our rheumatic fever video, erythema toxicum neonatorum, and finally, palmar erythema. We have a lot to do, so let's just get started. Erythema nodosum is an acute reaction of subcutaneous fat tissue. The disease presents with tender nodules, usually on both shins, arms and the torso. Patients also experience flu-like symptoms like fever, malaise and fatigue. The disease progression is divided in two or three stages depending on the used literature. So in case your book states the disease has two stages, just forget about the last one. The first stage is the pre-eruptive stage. Here patients experience fever, cough, general unwell-being, and sometimes also they experience pain in their joints. In the second stage, the eruptive stage, the characteristic nodules appear underneath the skin. They are usually 2.5 to 5 cm large and tender. As I said before, they are usually found on the shins, arms and trunk. The nodule undergoes a development from first being red, tender and hot to progressively becoming softer and smaller until it eventually disappears after approximately two weeks. New nodules will appear for a time of 6 to 8 weeks. Usually, no scar is observed after the nodule disappears. The post-eruptive stage is the completion of the healing process. In the time, the nodule is already becoming smaller and softer. As I mentioned earlier, this stage is not differentiated from the eruptive stage in all textbooks. The disorder is caused by a range of different conditions, which include streptococcal infections, primary tuberculosis, mycoplasma pneumonia, Epstein-Barr virus, autoimmune disorders like inflammatory bowel disease or sarcoidosis, pregnancy, different medications among which are sulfonamides and penicillin, as well as the hepatitis B vaccine and also some cancers can cause erythema nodosum. It is thought to be a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction, so type 4, to a specific antigen which can be observed in above named causes. It usually does not require treatment as it is self-limiting with a normal duration of 3 to 6 weeks. The next form of erythema is erythema multiforme. It is also an acute self-limiting inflammatory reaction and is usually due to infections of bacterial, fungal, 
parasitic or viral origin, as well as drug reactions, most commonly to penicillin under convulsion, convulsions like phenytoin and barbiturates, aspirin, modafinil and allopurinol. Other causative agents are physical agents like radiotherapy, cold weather or sunlight. The rash presents as a symmetrical and bilateral rash with individual round lesions. It is usually involving the extremities and mucous membranes. Erythema multiforme minor is a milder form which is typically less severe and resolves after a few weeks without treatment. Erythema multiforme major is the more severe form. It can be life-threatening as it involves the mouth and eyes. A third variant is the Fuchs syndrome, which involves primarily mucosal surfaces. It is often difficult to diagnose. Therapy is necessary for the major form as well as for the Fuchs syndrome. It is important to figure out the underlying cause and treat it as soon as possible. Also, proper hydration is of importance as through the ulcerations in the mucosal membranes, fluid can be lost. External treatment involves glucocorticoid creams. Also, antihistamines can be given to alleviate the itching. The disease is associated with frequent recurrences, often annually, but often even more frequent in immunocompromised patients. The next form is erythema migrans, also known as erythema chronico migrans. It is often seen in Lyme disease, a tick-borne infection with the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi. It appears 1 to 30 days after the tick bite and is not due to allergy as commonly thought, but rather to the skin infection with the bacteria itself. This characteristic rash can also be seen in another tick-borne disease called Southern Tick Associated Rash Illness, also known as Starry. The causative agent is not known for Starry. The, development, the developing rash is smaller and develops more quickly. Treatment usually is with antibiotics, most commonly doxycycline. The next erythematous disease is erythema infectiosum, also known as fifth disease, one of the childhood exanthemes. It is due to an infection with the parvovirus B19. Patients usually present in an early stage of the disease with low-grade fever, headache, and a runny nose. Later in a disease progression, the characteristic bright red rash with small circular lesions appears. It is usually starting in the face and involves later on the entire body. Patients are said to be infectious until the rash disappears. Usually this, the disease is quite mild but for a few risk groups, it can be dangerous. If women in the first trimester get infected, the fetus can develop, develop a hydrops fetalis, which usually leads to miscarriage. In under 5% of infections, the baby also develops severe anemia, which also leads to miscarriage. Also for patients with sickle cell disease or chronic hemolytic anemia, the disease is dangerous as they can develop an aplastic crisis. The next erythematous disease is erythema marginatum, which you might have heard about if you saw our video on rheumatic fever. If you have not seen it yet, you can click on the banner above. This erythematous disease presents with pink rings on the trunk and inner surface of the limbs. It usually does not affect the face and it is usually non-itchy. It can be seen in group A, streptococcal infections, myocarditis, allergic drug reactions and glomerulonephritis. 
even though it is only observed in approximately 5% of patients with rheumatic fever, it is one of the Jones criteria. So, two more erythematous diseases left. The next one is Erythema toxicum neonatorum, a pediatric disease. It is a harmless rash, which can be observed in approximately 50% of newborns within the first weeks of life. It is caused by physiological fluid loss, where the skin can become dry and red. It can also present with scaling red-yellowish pustules and is usually self-limiting within one to two weeks. Also milia neonatorum are often seen on a newborn skin. Those are small retention cysts, usually below the diameter of two millimeters, and they are seen in the face and on mucous membranes, which are also spontaneously reversible. The last erythematous disease is the palmar erythema. As the name suggests, it can be seen on the thinner and hypothenar eminences on the palmar surface of the hand. Its severity depends on the duration and intensity of the causative agent. The causative agents can be of physiological or pathological origin and include portal hypertension, chronic liver disease, pregnancy, thyrotoxicosis, psoriasis, hand, foot and mouth disease, or adverse drug reactions. Treatment, if necessary, is usually by treating the underlying condition. So, that's it for today. If you want to hear more of us, please subscribe. Thank you very much.